study of human and decays. Uh, before that, I have to introduce some formulas, very simple, I hope, for some, some technical part uh, on uh, Newton as oscillations, because we will need them for, uh, for to derive uh, the relations of inheritance. And uh, again, let me repeat you that we are here, we study uh, the coupling of uh, a quartz man uh, by charge that is also uh, uh, okay, it's also interesting. Uh, and uh, coupling of these quartz uh, to scalars, mainly to Higgs field, to vacuum. Uh, this is the major uh, arbitrariness of the standard model uh, in this sector, and uh, it's uh, the most mysterious part of the standard model. Uh, so, uh, let, let me remind you that uh, before the measles, there was a single observation of CP variation. It was done in K measles system, and uh, there are two parameters in, in, in K measles system. This is parameter Y, so is the admixture of a CP even final state with K-Long and Y prime is a direct CP relation in, in K2 when CP odd final state can decay directly to CP uh, sorry to C, CP odd uh, K it can decay to CP uh, even final states like by plus by minus by zero by uh, zero. So two parameters, only two parameters can be measured in KNs. Uh, and only two of them are absorbed. Unfortunately, this one, corresponding to the direct CP relation, which is extremely small, it's, it's uh, in other factor of 10 to the minus 3 uh, suppressed uh, in comparison with epsilon, so their ratio is 10 to the minus 3, and this is already a very small parameter. Uh, this, this one is not useful to constrain CK matrix elements, uh, but uh, from this one, we can, uh, plot the band, allowed band, of the position of rho and beta parameters of Wolfenstein. Uh, so in this plane, from this measurement, we know that the apex of the uh, unitary angle should be somewhere here. There are also a few important measurements from KM system, which is uh, also related to uh, the standard model parameters, so to unitary triangle of the standard of uh, CKM matrix, uh, so uh, this is decay of k-long to pi zero unit ring, so you can imagine how difficult to observe this one. And it's still in plan uh, to, to find this uh, decay at g part. Uh, also interesting to measure k plus and r plus uh, uh, unit rings, which uh, can measure this side. And uh, this actually all contribution to the study of the Kabayashi uh, Maskawa and that's in the standard model from KM physics. Uh, uh, other uh, measurements related to CP relation is uh, here. We, we can also try to find uh, electric dipole moment. Uh, I mentioned yesterday about strong CP relation, uh, and uh, it was, uh, there, there, there were some questions on uh, can this be uh, some solution to the lack of CP relation? Uh, due to Kabayashi Maskawa mechanism for cosmology, but you know that it's, it's very small. So uh, the standard model prediction, uh, and this is not from strong uh, CP relation, but uh, from uh, CP relation from the uh, weak sector. So it, it's extremely small, it's 10 to the, to the minus 38, uh, but in some extension of the standard model can be larger. So now the present uh, limit is very close to this this values. So uh, we don't observe selected that the moment for uh, nuclear and neutron uh, uh, and uh, proton, but uh, the upper limits now is very close. If it's already uh, can test some extension of the standard model. Uh, another interesting, but it, it's still, uh, please note, this is T violation, yeah? This both process are also related to T relation, which is possibly is related to CP. And CP, CP layer is, is experiment for uh, working with KMs, uh, is a measure of the rate difference for 
the entropy of k0 to k0 bar in comparison uh, with the rate of k0 bar to k0. This is direct CP violation. Uh, sorry, TT violation. So uh, if, if there is some difference, so this is this difference. Of course, it's related to CP. And uh, if you think about other systems, uh, okay, D methods is another. Uh, so this is uh, methods consistent with uh, second generation of quarks. Uh, this can be used for study CP relation. But in the standard model, there is only very tiny CP relation expected. This is due to, uh, due to gym cancellation in case of uh, D methods. And also, CP, there is a CKM separation because the unitary triangle corresponding to D meson is almost crashed. It's almost flat. Uh, two, two sides of this uh, triangle are comparable, and another one is extremely small. Uh, okay, B methods. Actually, what, what we would like to study during today, actually, tomorrow, is the B method system. So we uh, will discuss not only CP relation, but also rarity case. But for B methods, we expect large CP relation due to CPM, uh, CPM matrix, and uh, we can perform many independent measurements, unlike the system for parents. Uh, we have uh, quite simple pattern dynamics because of the work, big work is quite heavy and uh, some calculations can be uh, reliable, but unfortunately most of them are just cancelled. Uh, and uh, we, uh, some uncertainty is due to, due to uh, strong interactions. Uh, remind, I'd like to remind you that in KM system, for example, we cannot, uh, we cannot do nothing with uh, very precise measurements of eta prime to eta, just because of strong, uh, strong uh, interaction <coughs> contribution, which which is difficult to estimate. In measurements, some of them can be estimated, but most of them can be just cancelled. Uh, in case of tick work, uh, it's uh, we know that it's just decay to B work and W with a very strong, uh, very quickly. So it has a finite width. Uh, it means that all other contributions are uh, not compatible, not, uh, cannot compete with this uh, big diagram. So I would, I would stress that in flavor physics, this part is the most interesting. This, this is uh, all others are also okay. In all other, other uh, particles, we also try to uh, search for new phenomena. But here we we can expect uh, that we can measure, uh, we, we can perform many measurements uh, independent uh, with good precision. And what is B-methods? Uh, B-methods is uh, in this state, so it consists of anti with and some light flow, uh, not, not literally light, for example, for B sub C, it's anti B and C quark. Uh, but all all for, for uh, lighter quarks are possible here. So we have four B methods. They have uh, almost the same uh, lifetime except for B sub C, uh, because in this case uh, both B and C can decay weakly, and also there is annihilation uh, with another diagram with annihilation of uh, these two quarks. Uh, so this 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 three has the similar lifetimes. This is just slightly more heavier. Uh, and this, this uh, two is so almost degenerating mass, so they have the same masses, very equal lifetimes, but just the charge is different. Uh, we can produce them in epsilon 4 as decay. This is, uh, uh, I will uh, say about this later, but uh, the important thing is that it can be produced in the plus and minus collider. And the mass of this system is uh, just equal to sum of mass of two methods. And it means that from epsilon 4 we can produce, for example, this S. We can produce only B0 and B plus. But still, it's, it's very nice a source for B methods because it's a very clean process. Uh, we have uh, only two B methods produced from epsilon for us and no extra particles. Uh, we uh, have quite large cross section of epsilon for us production for the plus and minus uh, annihilation. Uh, so the ratio of uh, epsilon for us. Cross-section to other other processes like continuum uh, is 
is one to three. It's a big number. And we can also produce at 100 machines. But please note that at 100 machines, the cross-section of BB bar production is typically uh, typically 1%. At, at NHC, it's about 1% uh, of uh, just uh, uh, other inelastic uh, cross-section of protein. Uh, here we have 1 to 3, here we have 1 to 100. Uh, and uh, how they decay? So usually uh, we decay to charm because uh, VCB is uh, uh, quite large. Uh, so for example, it can decay to B, D, uh, mu and neutrino. Uh, so we have almost always D measurements in the final states. Only a few final states, uh, only a few percent of final states doesn't have this charm. charm. Uh, but it is much rarely that we have uh, to light box because VCD to VUB is approximately uh, 10, so it means that for rate we should square this. Uh, okay, this is just general information about beam uh, measurements. Uh, let, me, let me discuss uh, neutral measurement oscillation. So it's uh, just important because we measure CP relation uh, because of uh, in, in interference of oscillating the measurements. B and B bar uh, decay to some final state. So it's important for us. Uh, when we, we would like to have some evolution equation for, uh, for B methods, doesn't matter how many of them here. If we just single one, we will have here some complex number. If we have two B methods which can, uh, and there is some transition between B0 and B0 <coughs> bar. Uh, this will be just a complex matrix 2 by 2. If there is no mixing, it, it will be just that diagonal. And it, it's very simple to calculate that uh, okay, AA is, for example, B meson, B is anti B meson in, in the system. So this is uh, amplitude to have B0, B0 bar in our system after some time. And if we'd like to solve the evolution equation, we should solve uh, this one. And uh, these, two, uh, these two matrices are Hermitian, but please note that uh, it's, uh, this Hamiltonian itself is no more Hermitian here because the mesen can decay. And uh, gamma should be positive because we expect that uh, the number of mesen is, is not increasing, this time not decreasing. And now we introduce mixing. So introducing mixing, we just put some parameters here. We don't know what is parameters, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just expect that they are smaller uh, compared compare to the diagonal track. And uh, we have to introduce uh, both this, uh, uh, to introduce them both to uh, real part of the Hamiltonian and uh, imaginary part, because we have two contributions. So offshore contribution, when uh, some intermediate particles that mix uh, B and B bar are offshore, like, like here, uh, contribute to, to the real part. And on shell contribution, say, D meson can decay to pi phi to D, D, to, to D mesons, uh, which are uh, the same for both B0 and B0 bar. And then this pi phi are, are again produced, they can produce again B0, but they can also produce B0 bar. So they contribute to this part. Uh, now let's solve them. Uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, the simplest way is just to uh, have uh, to find I, uh, eigenstates of these equations. Uh, so they will have real li uh, some some mass and li li lifetime. Uh, this this eigenstate of this matrix. And to solve to find them, uh, and these eigenstates will be a mixture of B, B, for example, B meson and superposition of B meson and uh, B zero bar. And to find this P and Q, we just need to solve this, this equation and to find this eigenvalues for, for, uh, that will correspond to the proper mass in the lifetime of uh, these two eigenstates. And evolution of the eigenstates is simple. So this is like our eigenstate doesn't, doesn't mix uh, here. Yeah? If you produce uh, one eigenstate at some time, it will, uh, it will not mix to another one. Evolution of flavor eigenstates 
uh, I would say it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. It's, it's, no, it's no, no problem just to uh, put this evolution formula uh, to for, for, for meson and anti meson. It's, it's written here. Uh, and uh, we can see how it's realized in nature. So we have uh, four, uh, four mesons that can oscillate. Uh, these are KNs, D mesons, and 2B mesons. B0 with D core here, and B0 with S core as expectation. And they have very different pattern of uh, oscillations. And this is because uh, the formula is, is the same for all of them. Uh, but the parameters are different. So here is a list of parameters. So let 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 look at these two tables. And this is uh, this one is uh, the difference of two uh, the, of difference of masses of two eigenstates is delta, and the difference of lifetime of two eigenstates is delta gamma. And we have these two parameters. We just divide both to uh, gamma, and uh, we can see that they are very different for these four methods. For, for K, for example, we have uh, delta and gamma. Uh, here we have to compare with, uh, because of big difference of lifetime, so K short and K long, uh, that's we have here gamma short, but not the average uh, lifetime. And it's about one, and this is about one. And we have uh, this, this uh, oscillation formula for K. Uh, for D measures, uh, they are both very small. We expect that uh, it's, uh, now the DD bar mixing is measured. Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult to uh, to, uh, to divide uh, separately x and y for, for D methods, but we know that uh, the mixing exists here, but it's very small, it's tiny, it's almost uh, not possible to see it's here in this picture because it's about only 1%. Uh, for B0 system, which is the most important for us, delta M to gamma is about 1, uh, but there is almost no difference in uh, lifetime of two CP, uh, two eigenstates uh, of homogeneous matrix here. Uh, and B, B sub S mesons has uh, larger delta gamma to two gamma, uh, but they have a, a, a large number of delta M. Uh, then delta and gamma is very large. It, uh, it's actually a measure of how many times the, the meson cannot split <laughs> before its decay. So this is some average decay. Uh, decay reacts and it can oscillate, for example, this MS meson can oscillate about 12 times. For B0, it's just once. Uh, and uh, if we consider B meson only, B0, B, B, D, B, D meson, uh, it, it, it needs part delta gamma is very small and delta m is comparable to gamma so it little bit simplifies our formula because uh, we just have uh, this evolution formula is here and uh, we, we know that q to pi uh, the, uh, it has some phase it's shown here because there, there are VTD matrix element if you remember in Wolfenstein uh, parameterization this is uh, the uh, element which consists uh, big, uh, consists of the space, uh, but uh, the absolute value of the ratio is about one. Okay, let let now think about the relation in B meson. Uh, in K, we we work uh, we, we, we work with K scale, so we uh, study C P using K because because of huge difference like lifetime difference between K short and K long. We can just uh, can, can take uh, pure K, K on beam, beam and uh, study uh, CPU relations there. Uh, and in case of beam mesons, it doesn't work because there is no light, light and difference between uh, heavier beam mesons and light beam mesons. And uh, also, there is no asymmetry <coughs> asymmetry can be the case to uh, lepton, so there is no difference. Uh, there is no uh, CP relation in, uh, there is no asymmetry where B0 decay to left, uh, left uh, positive and anti B0 to negative. So new, new idea required for this, and this idea was suggested in 1980, quite a long time ago, <coughs> by Sandin Parker, who uh, suggested to look 
at some decay of B mesmer, which is common for B0 and B0 one. Uh, if if uh, this is true, that, that if we find some some final states which is common for B0 and B0 one, and try to calculate amplitudes uh, amplitude of uh, for, for B0 and B0 bar finally coming to, to, to F, uh, because of there are two two amplitudes. Uh, we will we'll kind of finally can get some uh, CP variation, not only quality of these two branch impressions. Uh, some Carter estimated that this, this asymmetry can be as much as 10%, and uh, this is large compared to uh, less than 1% CP variation effects in Kerala. And please note that the idea came in 1980, and Bill Mesmonds were discovered explicitly reconstructed only a few years after that. Uh, so after that, uh, after after this idea was introduced, uh, people realized that B, B, B physics is very important. So uh, during next next decade, decade uh, the study of B methods were done by two experiments. They compete uh, one in Germany, another one in the United States, and uh, they compete in, in studying B methods and finally get a lot of uh, nice results, which which allowed finally to uh, came to conclusion that we can build uh, B-factories, just special experiments to study CP relations with b methods. So they measured for the first uh, many, many uh, uh, matrix elements uh, of conventional star matrix. Uh, they can measure it on the absolute value, yeah, because they, they could not see the times of the CP relation. Uh, they observed EV bar mixing, which is uh, which was one of the great discoveries of the 1980. Uh, they observed that uh, really there, there are the case of B mesons of some final states, which is which is common for B0 and B0 bar, with relatively relatively large branch infection. It's not for B mesons. The typical branch infections are all below one uh, percent. It has Many hundreds of decay, of decay modes, so each of them is about one percent or more. Uh, and all these three, uh, three important things uh, are very good use for uh, to implement the ideas of Sandy and Carter uh, to find superior situation in us. And because large, large, large mixing means that we uh, we can really see the effect of. Uh, effect of difference for B mesm and anti B mesm because of oscillation. Uh, because th this effect is uh, maximum of this effect is at uh, oscillation at this uh, of oscillation period. If it's if it's small compared to the uh, B mesm lifetime, so it means that we can see the effect experimentally. Uh, Stimulation can be large because because of uh, these uh, measurements. Uh, and uh, that is a convenient final state to, to, to study. So it, it's turned out that uh, we have great case when, when uh, the suggestion of uh, the first idea was more pessimistic than the final point there. Okay, so the best way to, to study the meson, as I told, is uh, produced uh, them from epsilon chorus resonance, uh, which has a quantum number of four, but means that it can be produced in the plus and minus annihilation. Uh, so it's here, its mass is exactly at the threshold of BB bar production. That's why it's uh, more wild than other, other states, consistent with BB bar plots. Uh, so it's decayed to. B0 to, to, to neutral BB pairs and charging BB pair approximately one to one. And the important thing is that the two BB are produced in P wave, and uh, it means that we, we have to consider some uh, quantum states of two BB here. Another important thing for experimental is that the energy of BB is, is known a priori because uh, it's just equal to the half energy of the center of mass system, or it's just equal to the energy of the electron opposing to the beam in the center of mass. So it's, it's really a very nice source. And the problem is that 
that uh, if we just try to calculate the CP relation due to the uh, various solutions, we will find that uh, it's vanishes, it's just equal to zero. Independent of, it, it, it exists, but we cannot measure it. Uh, actually, we can measure if, if, we, if, we, if we measure this asymmetry, not in, in, integrating over all times, but in each, uh, in each time of uh, <coughs> dimension. So, if we have uh, two times the decay of the first dimension decay to some CP final states, while the second decay to some flavor specific mode, uh, and if we can measure it in both times, or it, uh, actually we will need only the, the difference. Uh, if we can measure this, we, we will see that CP asymmetry exists. But if we integrate all, all the time, because it's, uh, this function is just asymmetric on uh, the flip of sign of delta t, uh, so the integral over this one is zero. This, this means that uh, if we would like to work with epsilon for s, uh, we will need to measure the time, differ uh, time difference uh, of uh, two dimension decays. This can be done from the vertex information. If we can measure the vertices of the uh, two big decays, we can measure, we, we can convert this into the time. But the problem is that uh, in epsilon for s, epsilon for, for s rest frame, the dimensions are almost at rest, so they stay. They don't fly, and the mean decay flight is just 20 microns. It means that if you if you would like to measure the dependence uh, or time dependence, you need to measure the uh, the the flight with accuracy, say, few microns. Probably is five is the maximum, uh, the, the most the maximum precision which will still allow to measure this small. Five microns is just impossible experimentally. So it means probably that we have no chance to measure. But it's not true. There was a good idea suggested in the beginning of 90 uh, by Alexander, who suggested to have uh, boosted boosted center of mass. Uh, so if, if B meson doesn't like to uh, to fly weekly, we can make them. We just need to, to make pixel for s to move uh, in the laboratory system. And uh, to achieve this, we just need to, to have, uh, so this is a picture when we have equal energy of uh, electrons and positrons. In this case, the difference the distance between two, two dimension vertices is about only 20 microns. And if, if we, we get, for example, uh, 9 GV, electrons and 3 GV positrons, the, the, the distance between them will be quite big. It can be measured because uh, present, uh, presently we using vertex detectors we can achieve the accuracy of about 50 microns. This is idea uh, which came in, in, uh, in the beginning of 1990. Uh, 1990. And uh, what, what do we need to, to study CP relation? We, we, of course, need accelerator, but not the simple accelerator. We need accelerator that can produce a, a huge number of luminescence. That time, uh, it, it was required that the uh, luminosity of accelerator should be increased by two order of magnitudes compared to uh, the existing that time. And we need also very nice detector because we, for CP relation measurement, we need we need to measure vertices, we need to, to measure the type of particles for uh, identifying the flavor of the second dimension, and then we need uh, to have very efficient detectors, otherwise we just lose events, uh, which, which is difficult to get from accelerator. Uh, it was finally made by uh, two, two detectors, one in Japan and another in the uh, United States, uh, they started to uh, to uh, be produced uh, in the somewhere here in 1992, 1993. Uh, so during six years, uh, it, it takes uh, to build these two machines and two detectors. And uh, interesting thing is that they started to take data with, uh, within two weeks from each other. So they started in 1999. And one, one by 
another one, so uh, in two weeks, uh, the war started first, and, uh, in, in first of May, and the birth started uh, in the middle of May. Uh, th th this is the luminosity taken during 10 years of preparation for Bell. Babar st uh, stopped a little bit earlier because uh, it couldn't compete. Uh, but still, those experiments uh, get, get uh, uh, very nice results. Uh, okay, how, how can we measure the speed violation? So, for the speed violation measurements, we will need to reconstruct some of the mechanism in the some uh, final state. Uh, like CP final state, like gypsite shot. For gypsite shot, it's very simple decay. We have two millions gypsite decay to two leptons, and we can see just two millions here. Uh, I guess this one and this one. They, they can be gypsite. And he shot also decay within the detector volume. Uh, it's average uh, light uh, decay, decay flight uh, length is about three centimeters. So it decays somewhere here. To two points, so we can see all four particles here from the final states. We also need to, to know what, what, what it was in the beginning. Is it D0 or B0 bar? And we can use the, another dimension in the event to determine the flavor of the first one in, the, uh, in some initial time. We will need to measure the distance between two vertices, which, which is done using this detector. So this is a vertex detector that allows to measure the uh, track position with accuracy of about 50 micron. And uh, it, I, ideally, we can see, the, we, we expect to see such picture. For B0, for B, for B we will have the distribution, so with delta, delta, uh, delta T, the uh, light and difference between two dimensions. We will we'll expect the picture to be like this one, and for a B0 bar, like this one. You can see that if we integrate over the time, there will be no difference. Yeah. But uh, a real detector, uh, of course, has some, uh, some uncertainty, some uh, errors in measurement. So we, uh, in reality, the amplitude will be smaller because uh, sometimes we determine the flavor not correctly. And it will also it will be smeared uh, because of resolution of the vertex detector. So finally, when we get this formula, we will need to correct uh, the measured amplitude to get uh, the real amplitude uh, to, to pull these effects. It's also not very simple, but it's just technical thing. Uh, this is examples. So we, we can reconstruct B into gypsite shot. Very, very, uh, it's, it's a very clean final state. We have almost no background here. It's less than 1%. Uh, because as I told, at the factors, we, we know the energy of the meson a priori. Uh, therefore, we can compare these our combination really uh, has the, the known energy. And we, in addition to jet cycle shot, we can also add some other states, uh, other shimonium states, like FSC, PC1, Psi prime, which, which fortunately have the same uh, CP state, so they can just edit here. Uh, probably this is not fortunate, because uh, it's interesting to measure two uh, different CP states, with positive uh, CP and negative CP. So all this provides positive, uh, sorry, negative CP. And we will also, interesting to measure, is it the sign of asymmetry flipped with, uh, if, it, uh, if we use the opposite CP eigenstate. And this can be done with gypsy kilon final states. The problem is kilon, because kilon is, is not good particle. It's, it's, it doesn't produce any track here. It's a uh, typical decay flight is about 15 meter. So it means that if there will be no some stopper here, it will decay somewhere, I don't know, but far away from here. Uh, we have we have iron system around around detector where it stopped and finally produced some hydronic shower which can be detected. So from this shower we only only direction of KLO. So we, we need to reconstruct its momentum if we would like to reconstruct the momentum, uh, but we, we don't know. Fortunately, we have two information. We know the energy of the mass and we know the mass of the mass. So using this, we can, uh, using one of them, we can calculate, for example, momentum of, uh, using, using this energy, we can calculate the momentum of, of KO, and finally the momentum of, of this whole combination. So the mass are picked here. You can see that here there, uh, there, there is a background. So this, these are backgrounds. 
that should take, to be taken into account in our calculation of CP variation. Okay, now let's try to measure some angles of unity elliptic angle. We'll start with beta. Uh, so this is decay amplitudes for B, decay amplitudes of the shock. Uh, we have VCB here, we have VCS here, and uh, another way to get the same final states is via mixing. So we can do this uh, first B, decay, B, B mixed to the zero part and then produce again gypsy k shot. If we just calculate the ratio of amplitudes of two of, two this, uh, of these two amplitudes, uh, we can see that it's equal to VCD, VCD, or VCD, VCD, VCD uh, star over VCD star VCD. Uh, and uh, just taking into account what is uh, P2Q for B methods, uh, we can calculate that uh, this will give us the angle beta of the limit angle. So the asymmetry which we'll measure will be proportional to sine of 2 beta. Another important thing for this, for this final state. There can be also a pinging pin pin uh, diagram attributed to the same final state. This is a pinging diagram and we'll talk about pinging tomorrow. Uh, but just mentioned it today. That if, if we take into account pinging diagrams, which is very difficult to calculate theoretically, we, we will see that it, it can contribute. So in, in this case, it spoils our measurements because it uh, can spoil. But fortunately, it doesn't. Because uh, the matrix elements corresponding to pinging diagrams are exactly the same corresponding to the three one. This is very, very lot. We have this final state where the pinging contribution doesn't uh, bias our measurements. So It's not precisely, that, that's true. It's true because, because the cancellation, if we ignore the new quark contribution to loop, or, that, that's correct. Because, but its contribution is smaller than 1%. So, uh, okay, to be, to be precise, I should say that uh, Mishi is correct and uh, thing new contributions has slightly different phase. But it's, it's uh, smaller than 1%. So it's beyond our present, uh, present uh, experimental sensitivity to to see the effect of pinging diagrams in, in this particular uh, final state. Uh, the first observation of CP was done in, uh, already more than 10 years ago, in uh, 2001. So both Bell and Babar simultaneously <coughs> reported the large CP relation in this final state. Uh, this is a very well obtained. They have almost the same number of Libri-Bar methods pairs. This happens approximately after one year of data taking. <coughs> this is the first observation besides uh, outside the KM system. And this is the present oh, situation. Sorry, could you please go back to the previous slide? Um, just. Why yeah. are the numbers so different? Uh, okay, this is, uh, please take into account that there is a, uh, experimental errors. This is errors. We cannot, we cannot be more precise. 0.99 and 0.59. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that true? Is it, it, it that mistake it, on the side? No, no. It, 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 this is true, and uh, please know that uh, this is error. So it means that they are still consistent within the setups. Okay, it's less than two signals. Hmm? Now it's uh, 0.7. Uh, now, now it's, it's, it's about this value. This is, uh, this is from Bell. Uh, and I will show in the next slide the average of the two experiments and uh, other experiments as well. So this is uh, the last uh, Bell paper, which was done this year. Uh, sorry, the last year. Uh, we, we see this difference. This is symmetry, this is, this is uh, B0, this is B0 bar, so we could just subtract one to another and divide over sum. Uh, this, this will be oscillating asymmetry, this is example of asymmetry, and this is in case of JPSI uh, K short, and this is JPSI K long. So you can see that really the sign of asymmetry flipped because this one, this final state is CP even, this is CP over. So they should have different, different. Uh, sign of the symmetry. 
Uh, okay, so this is some average over all measurements up to now for uh, angle beta. Uh, just very recently, HCB presented the first results on measuring of CP asymmetry of being the gypsite shot. But still, uh, they are not so precise as beta curves. I guess soon the uh, LHCB can beat in, in precision uh, of this measurement uh, both the factors. But okay, this is still, uh, still beta curves are uh, two beta curves by one and then uh, has the, the most precise uh, measurements of uh, angle beta. Uh, we have to fold ambiguity if, if we convert the uh, sine of two beta to beta. We have two allowed angles in the unitary triangle uh, plane. But fortunately, we can exclude uh, experimentally one of them. So we, we, can, we, we have some, some decays that, that are related to not to sine of two beta, but cosine of two beta. For example, B decaying to D0 by 0 can measure this one. Unfortunately, it's not very precise, but still, uh, still precision is enough to, to just exclude this region. And we know that angle beta is equal to approximately 22 degrees. I'm sorry, what about those measurements in which sine to beta is more than one, even if you take error bars into account? Uh, so uh, the question, can we measure? No, uh, in some experiments, for example, in Babarge to JXI, hadronic, yeah. sine to beta is more than one, even even if you take error bars into account. Yeah, error bars is, is just one sigma level. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, when you measure, you just measure what what, what you have. Yeah. Yeah. We know that physically, physically, it should be within from minus one to one. Yeah. For example, for in a power measurements, it's equal to three point two. Mm -hmm. so how was it measured? In what kinds of so, so that we get sign? Yeah, yeah. And actually, what we measure is is, is is some some small difference. So. Okay. Uh, we measure uh, some small difference, and, and this is amplitude, yeah? But this amplitude should be correct on the roll tuck fraction, on uh, some, uh, some other smearing effect with the detector. So when, when you do this, you measure here, for example, 0 0.3, like a lip CB, like lip CB measure, yeah? So the visible amplitude is, is quite small. But from this number, you, you should you should you should uh, just correct for wrong wrong time fraction for, for some uh, experimental effect. So you measure this one, you introduce some corrections, and finally you can get some number which is more than one. And th this is okay. So we, we finally have very precise measurements of sine of 2 beta. And uh, can we conclude something from this, from these two measurements? Actually, we have two measurements of CP violation, uh, measurement of sine of 2 beta in B measurements, and measurement of CP violation in K measurements. Uh, yeah, OK. We can see that uh, this, this band uh, can, be, can, be, it can intersect with this one. But this, this will happen with any values of sine of 2 beta, right? So we still not check that, uh, that Kabayashi Maskawa uh, matrix is really responsible for all CP violation effects in the standard model. What, what we need more? Actually, what, what we can do is to have at least one more measurement. Of course, we somehow measure the size of the planet. This is also. Uh, can be taken into account. But uh, ideally, it, it would be very nice to measure all three angles. All three angles, not only beta, but also alpha and gamma, and to measure all sides of this triangle with uh, some with precision to check that everything is consistent. So, sine of two beta we measure in this, in this final state. Uh, it's possible also in, in some other final state, but here the accuracy, the accuracy is still small. This I will discuss tomorrow. Uh, today I will discuss uh, measurement of sine of 12 and sine of uh, and, and also angle gamma with some characters. So we will measure no not the sine of the gamma, but just angle gamma here. Uh, let's measure alpha now. This one. 
here we're not so lucky. There is a very nice final state, B decay into pi pi. Uh, it's quite rare decay. It's about 10 to the minus 5 pi as a branch infection. But still, it's a huge number of events can be reconstructed in detectors for B0 decay into pi pi. Uh, it's really related to alpha, because here we have UB, UB, and uh, just we have this ratio of amplitudes, that, if, if you remember the formula for CP relation, uh, when uh, the imaginary part of this ratio times P over Q is uh, just angled, uh, which, which we measure. So here we measure alpha really. But there is another problem in this decay mode, because we have uh, pinging, pinging contribution. We can have this loop uh, with tick work here, which finally result in the same final state. We have two amplitudes, this one and this one. And they have different, unlike the previous case, they have different weak phase, phases. So it, uh, this means that what we, we will measure in reality is not alpha, but something else. How to solve it? Uh, the idea uh, also, uh, the idea was proposed by uh, London Granau uh, in the beginning of 1990, uh, but let's let's uh, see what what is what will be, what we will, will measure in reality after pinging contribution. Okay. So uh, because of uh, pinging contribution, we have uh, we have some extra extra uh, extra contribution to the measure. Uh, So we will actually measure some effective alpha, which is which is shifted from from a uh, real one by by some some angle uh, theta, and we will have also direct CP asymmetry in these final states. In the previous one, we have no direct CP asymmetry uh, in the cycle shot; it was just consistent with zero. And here we will have it. And if we would like to measure alpha, uh, we need to take uh, the idea of London and Granau uh, and. Uh, which relies on uh, either spin symmetry. So we have uh, decay of B as and decay into pi plus pi plus pi zero pi zero and uh, charging B as and decay into pi plus pi zero. If we, we, we can do for each, we, we can do uh, this, uh, we have these uh, relations. Uh, each of this amplitude consists of three and pinging, uh, pinging contributions. And we can, we can uh, build either spin triangles for for big measles and for big, big antigen methods. If we, if we plot these two, uh, two triangles together, so this will be the effective alpha, which is not interesting for us, which is, which is different from alpha of, of unitary triangle. And here we still will, we will have a real alpha, which is interesting. In B0 decay into pi pi, we, we really see big uh, direct CP violation. In case of Jeff Psyche shot, it was zero. In this case, it's about 30%. In case of Bayer, and again, also 30% in case of our. Uh, this direct CP asymmetry is seen here, yeah? If even we integrate over the time, the asymmetry is not, uh, is not vanishing. It means that here we have uh, this uh, sign-like sign term, which is shifted from zero. And uh, this is uh, the present measurements of Bell and Babar uh, of this final state. So this is measurement of asymmetry. And uh, this uh, it's, it's a little bit more complicated how to observe the alpha from, from these measurements. It's uh, uh, done by, by both experiments. And this is average, which is done by CPI filter group, which uh, average shows them. You can see from B0 into pi pi, while we measure the asymmetry quite precisely, we, we cannot actually measure the end level. There is another final state so where we are much more lucky. This is rural, rural final states. It's experimentally, it was found that branching from B0 to rural is extremely small. It means that there is no pinging contribution. So in spite of this final state is more complicated, we can measure alpha uh, uh, much more precisely because there is no pinging contribution. And if we if we see what we have now, uh, this is pi pi. You see, in spite of very nice final states, but because of large pinging contribution, we cannot extract alpha properly from here. But it can be done from rho. 
and it's really done. There is another final state, B and Europa, which, which also some uh, give some, some more information. So if we combine all these three measurements all together, we finally measure alpha with not bad precision. So it's about 90 degrees, and uh, the present frequency is quite nice. If you look at the uh, unitarity triangle complex plane of rho interplane, uh, this is the allowed place from this measure. Okay, angle gamma. The last angle of the unitary triangle. It's again uh, not so easy to measure it. Uh, there was a good idea how to, how to try to do this. If big k is into d to d zero k, it can it can do uh, it, it can, it can uh, there are two diagrams. One consisting of b, another is v c b. Yeah. Both for big for big for big, big, big uh, charge dimension, both can decay to uh, charge dimension can decay to k minus d uh, via two the two diagrams. The only problem is that here we have d zero bar and here we have d zero. They are different. However, that is a good idea. Sometimes uh, d can decay to some CP final states as well. d can decay to, say, k plus k minus, k short by zero. Uh, and in this case, we cannot distinguish is d0 or d0. So the amplitude should, should be, should be, uh, should interfere. And finally, uh, this interference will result to CP violation, and we can extract angle gamma from this one. There are three ideas how to use this. One is just straightforward. Just try to reconstruct dimension decaying to some CPU agent states. Another possibility is try to reconstruct dimension decaying to states which are typical for D0 bar. This is very, very rare decays. But in this case, uh, you, you can see that, oops, that uh, this ratio uh, between these two amplitudes is, is they're not uh, of the same size. One is suppressed. So if we use, uh, if we if we use uh, this trick with uh, the decay with small amplitude, we will increase the CP violation. Uh, and finally, there is possibility just to combine everything. So if D0 decays in some final C body, final state like K short by plus by pi minus, uh, in this final state there will be a mixture of everything of this doubly Kaviva suppressed decay, so the Kaviva, uh, uh, normally Kaviva suppressed decays and Kaviva allowed one. Uh, and this will uh, will be everything in the one final state. How to resolve this? This is a question. I will show this in two slides. First, first I will just uh, uh, illustrate how the first method works. Uh, so both experiments might uh, try both methods. So I will illustrate the by bar pictures the first method and by bar pictures the second one. Uh, so this is how bar measured this size of these two triangles for B mesons and for, for anti-B mesons for B plus and B minus uh, using, using these measurements and they measure these sides other sides are more, more simple to measure and uh, Bell, uh, I use Bell data to illustrate as a second method when uh, one is uh, allowed decay modes and one, uh, another one is double cannula suppressed so here, we, we, uh, as a present statistic, we can just see only some very, very, very hint. Probably it's not a signal. But we can st stay, it's useful because we use this upper limit to constrain, uh, oops, direction, uh, to constrain uh, this ratio, which is also not known. It should be measured. And the idea of uh, uh, three, three body final states, uh, the idea of how to resolve the contributions of different uh, different uh, uh, CP eigenstates uh, in, in D0 decay and K short by pi, pi is just using Dalit's plot, Dalit's plot of D0 decay. So this is an example. Dalit's plot looks very nice. It it's, it's, uh, contains some bands, and this is the result of contributions of some resonances and the interference. Uh, it's a real data by the way. So in data we see uh, such such uh, interesting phenomena. So this is for D0. For D0 bar it will be just a mirror reflection of this data. 
could you please explain in more detail what is Dalit's plot? What is Dalit's plot? This is mass, uh, we have, uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're correct. I should explain this. So we uh, we study the decay of D0, decay to K short by plus by minus, three, three, uh, three body final state. And uh, if we plot mass of combinations of two particles, say K short by plus and K short by, by minus, yeah? They will completely uh, fix the dynamics of the decay of D0 into three body final states. So in two body final states, there is no freedom, so the, this is very simple. And three body final states is more complicated. There are two, two parameters that can fix the uh, uh, intermediate dynamics of this decay. And we choose the mass of, mass of k short pi plus and k short pi minus. So if there is no dynamics, uh, this is a loud region and, and there is no any, any dynamics. So this is just a phase space three body decays. It will be uniformly distributed here. This will be some some re region which is kinematically allowed region, which will be just uh, just uniform in this. So in the method case, we have some 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 resonances in between k star rho, uh, excited k stars, uh, and they can interfere here, different resonances. They have some different phases. For example, if we plot, we, we, we see some interesting features. For example, this one is is k star resonance, which interfere uh, destructively. Yeah? Unlike peak here, this projection of this, this balance plot on one axis, unlike peak here, we, we see deep here because of destructive, destructive interference. This is a raw, uh, raw omega interference that results in very, very uh, in this shape. So sometimes it's very interesting pictures. Uh, but uh, now we would like to, to use this to find to extreme gamma. And uh, it's possible, uh, probably again, I will, I, it's better to skip some details here, just to say that this method will give uh, the best accuracy in determination of gamma, and it's, it's gamma to now. So this is this is results. Uh, this is average of Bell and Labar of all methods. And gamma, the most difficult angle, is also finally measured with some not by precision. Uh, last year, uh, LHCB also tried to do this using, uh, because this is charging of where LHCB can do, and uh, hopefully uh, soon LHCB can, can improve uh, the measurement of this angle uh, much better. So this is the present status, okay? And uh, I'm almost finishing uh, regulation. So we only need to measure sides of unitality triangle, which can be done. So this side is uh, proportional to V U B over V V uh, V U B over V C B, which can be studied just by studying branch infection of B more than seven point case uh, when we have charge final states and non charge final states. So this ratio of this of this proof uh, to matrix segments is about 0, 4, 1. And this, uh, this side consists of uh, VTD, uh, actually it consists of VTD to VCD, but uh, to measure VTD, we can, we can measure this from ratio of VTD to VTS, which can be done uh, from uh, the measurement of uh, uh, BB bar mix into this, this and this and this and this and this bar mix, which is done already at carbon colliders, first done at Tevatron. And it also can be measured from radiated decay, from, from radiated human decay. Okay, this is what we get now with uh, this uh, all elementary angle measurements. So if we just combine all our, our measurements of angles, we will see this picture, and we have some region which where all measurements intersect, and there is no contradiction between different angle measurements. And uh, if we measure, uh, take these measurements with only sides, we again have some region where all measurements intersect nicely. And if we combine, we still have no contradictions. So we have, we have very nice agreement between the different measurements. Uh, okay, so the summary of this picture is that 
uh, we made really big job. We, we measured uh, the one unitary candle, which is the most important one in, in the uh, CKM sector, uh, quite precisely. So the uh, angles beta is measured with one degree accuracy. Uh, gamma, which is the most difficult, is already measured with about 10, 10 degrees uh, accuracy. And we also measure the side sources, and everything is consistent. So we can we can we can see that our Kabayashi Moscow model solely without any other extra sources can describe everything that we measure in the methods. Okay. Questions? You. Uh, you've had a lot of elephants on your slides, Greek suited elephants. What do they mean? Uh, which elephants? There were a lot of green suited elephants on your slide. Ah, ah I see, I see, I see. Yeah, this is the, the trademark of Babar Corporation. So this is just uh, uh, the sign. So elephants means that this, this, this is done by Babar. The square, uh, square, square blue square with, with the sign bell means that this, this uh, date is from that. Any more questions? If not, let us thank Professor Pachov once again.